Tactics. If you missed any of my opening segment, go check it out on demand in the Stephen A. Smith podcast. Brought to you by Capital One. Why settle for average? With Capital One, you can open an account with a savings rate five times the national average. Welcome to Banking Reimagined. Hey, hey, what's in your wallet? Capital One, NA member, FDIC. Also, this Rivalry Week preview is being brought to you by ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil is, is growing algae for biofuels that could one day power truck ships and planes with half the greenhouse gas emissions of today's fuels. Learn more at energyfactor.com. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get uh, to the callers, before I get back to football, grant me just 60 seconds to vent. Because you see, I'm in our New York studios and um, I ran into my buddy, Frank Isola. Frank Isola, for those of you who don't know, used to write for the New York Daily News doing an outstanding job covering the Knicks for about 16, 17 years. He's now at The Athletic. He's obviously a contributor to ESPN on shows like Around the Horn, PTI as a subs, et cetera, et cetera. Love Frank. Frank and I go back a long ways. But every time I see Frank, Frank is one of the people in this world that I like to see the least, even though I love him. Because every time I see him, I can't help but think about the Knicks. And when I think about the Knicks, it, 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 it does things to me. The Brooklyn Nets beat the New York Knicks yesterday. Score doesn't matter. It was the fourth victory of the season that the Brooklyn Nets have won without Kyrie Irving. The New York Knicks have four victories on the entire season. I'm going to repeat that. The Brooklyn Nets have as many victories without Kyrie Irving that the New York Knicks have, period. The New York Knicks want to tell you that we didn't commit long-term and we'll have room and we'll be in position to go after marquee folks. And I agree with that. My question is, tell me what marquee free agent would give the New York Knicks a sniff right now. Who would do it? And last but not least, this is where I can't absolve anybody. I watched a couple of games. Listen, Marcus Morris can play. Julius Randle is no scrub. I think he needs to be a bit ambidextrous, but he's no scrub. He could play. I believe that the New York Knicks have an abundance of people that can play and can actually contribute to winning teams. But when you put them together, it doesn't mesh. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Morris has been a, a, a forward his entire career. We're watching him bringing the ball up the court and calling plays sometimes. I watch Julius Randle pick up, bring the ball up the court and call plays. And he's one-handed. How the hell does that make sense? It doesn't. So once again, I can understand Steve Mills and Scott Perry and their complaints towards David Fisdale. I can understand others who have complaints about Steve Mills and Scott Perry. My only issue with them was saying it in a press conference in the immediate aftermath of a loss to the Cleveland Cavaliers at Madison Square Garden as opposed to talking to James Dolan privately. That was my only issue. But it's a mess. And you're losing with guys that ain't going to probably be here next year. What are the Knicks building? What are they building? I see the Nets, what they're building. We know that Kevin Durant coming back is a light at the end of the tunnel. We know that Kyrie getting uninjured is a light at the end of the tunnel. And we're watching them win games without Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Which means they'll only be better when those two get there. What do the New York Knicks have? Uh, 
I'm growing depressed. I'm growing very, very, very depressed. I'm just going to leave it at that because I want to be nice. I actually got love for Steve Mills and Scott Perry. I really do. Nobody's rooting for them harder than me. But I am so sick and tired of seeing the Knicks be the Knicks. It's depressing. I mean, can you at least wait until after the holidays to stink? For once? Does our holidays always have to be compromised? Do we always have to rely on a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Or the bright lights at Rockefeller Center around Christmas time to have a reason to be festive? I mean, damn! Damn! Mike, you're live with Stephen A. Mike, are you there? Hey, Stephen A. How you doing, buddy? Go ahead, man. You know how I'm doing. Go ahead. <laughs> Listen, man. Look, I'm a big NBA fan myself. First of all, thank you for taking my call. I'm a huge fan of yours, by the way. So, a huge fan. Love the show and everything. So, yeah. thank you for that. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm a Heat fan. So, I'm, I'm not going to you know, toot their horn. Can we get some love for Luca? Doncic for MVP let me stop right you. now. Let me, let, me stop, let me stop you right now. Luka Doncic is in that conversation. This brother's spectacular. And what he did to James Harden in Houston the other day, a triple-double, a 35-point triple-double in 25 minutes, this dude's got the game and he's got the swag. You know, I was talking uh, to, you know, Adrian or Wojnarowski, our, our ultimate NBA insider, along with uh, a couple of other people. And we were just raving about Doncic because he's spectacular. But something needs to be said. Phoenix Suns picking DeAndre Ayton. Now, you know, I tried to tell people, and they were sitting I was like, you can't pass up on DeAndre Ayton. You can't teach seven feet. You understand what I'm saying, this kid? And he started Arizona. And Bob, they were like, Stephen A. doesn't know what he's talking about. I said, you're absolutely right. I don't, because I never saw Luka Doncic until he got to the NBA. You see what I'm saying? So I'd never seen him. I'd never seen him at all. Um, so I didn't know, and I told the audience that. So I don't know what to think about it, because I never saw him. But the coach in Phoenix did. Vlade Divox from Europe. He has seen and heard about Luka Doncic. He had the number two overall pick where he picked Marvin Bagley. Uh, The number three pick, Atlanta allowed Dallas to trade up. Trey Young can ball. Trey Young is arguably the second coming of Steph Curry, the way he can handle and shoot, no doubt. But I think it's safe to say at this juncture, he's no Luka Doncic. This brother's on another level right now. So my point in Mike and saying that is, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and listen, man, I, I know you're a huge Knicks fan. I feel for you. Look, we had some good Roberts in the Heat and the Knicks. I remember those days. Keep your head up. Man, Mike, do you know, I'll, t- I'll share this with you. And since you listen to me and you follow my show, and I appreciate the love, by the way, you know I'm telling the truth when I say this, because I don't lie. I, who was the person imploring the Knicks to, to draft Donovan Mitchell a few years ago? Who was that? Oh, guy? you did. You I did. was over the airways getting crucified. I said, Donovan Mitchell out of Louisville, take him with number nine overall. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Po- folks was like, what are you talking about, man? Ain't nobody got him projected there. I said, the hell with that. I like Dennis Smith Jr. I like Malik Monk. I did not like Frank Nielakina. I'm sorry, I think it was the eighth pick. I did not like Frank Nielakina. And Phil Jackson was asleep at the wheel. Or getting his hip treated or something. I don't know. But I knew that Donovan Mitchell should have been a pick. And what happened? Look at this. I don't even know what to say, bro. I don't even know what to say. Mike, thank you for the call. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Back with more of your phone calls to close out the hour in a minute. You're listening live. Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Today on ESPN Daily, 